this is Lana from the All Crafts channel. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you two different ways that you could seam your work together, meaning you're just going to sew it together. This first way is called a weave seam. And what I like about this is that it lays really flat. There really isn't a ridge. I color, I did them in contrasting yarn so you could see where the stitches would be. This is the right side and then this would be the wrong side. And I really like this because it lays super flat. Another way to do it is what we call a whip stitch. And um, this is a stronger seam for uh, to be used in areas where there's going to be a lot of pressure pulling on a garment, maybe a shoulder, underarm, maybe a waist area. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and let's get the party started. <laughs> To show you two different ways to um, to sew or join um, little squares. I made two different um, little granny squares. This one has three rounds and then this one has just two rounds. Um, there's a video on my channel that shows you how to make a classic granny square. I'll put the link right here on the screen for you to watch that and uh, so if you want to learn how to do that. So there's two different styles um, that I usually use and it depends on what you want the end result to be. For granny squares, if you're making a blanket, um, the one I'm going to show you right now, these haven't been blocked yet so you can see they're still kind of scraggly. Um, but if you want uh, the piece to lay a little bit more flat, meaning you don't want it to have a ridge, um, this is, I would do like a weave seam. Um, this is what um, is called the weave seam, and these are the right sides of the of your work. You could see that difference how it looks on the wrong side. Use this yellow yarn just so you could see um, the stitching better, um, and it'll show up. So here, what you have to determine first is the edges. So here, the granny squares you always do three. The granny square that I do, I use three stitches in the corner. So I'm going to start joining on the second. Uh, when I mean stitches, I mean three chains. So here's one, two, three. So I will join on the second chain. One, two. So here's one and two. And I'm going to join there because that would be the actual corner. If you have like a row or a blanket or something squares you're doing, you'll be able to see the edges. This is just kind of because of that square here. So here, this is the right side. So I'm going to flip these over. And now I just have my wrong side showing. I'm going to start sewing here um, on the bottom. I'm going to begin on the second chain. So here is, let me count it, one, two. Here's my second chain. And then on this other side, here's one, two. There's my second chain. And you're only going to slip it, um, your needle through one loop, not both loops, okay? So then here, I'm just going to make a quick little, I'm not going to finish the knot. I just want to show you guys how to stitch it there. So now here we're only going to be going through one loop of your chain. So here's my next stitch, my next chain. So here I'm just going to go through one loop. Okay, so here's one loop and one loop. I'm going to go through there. Let me move that tail. And then I go to my next stitch, one loop, one loop. And when I say one loop, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about when I do the next one. Here's the next stitch and you're going to continue that way. It's just going to look like a little line. And here's one loop of my chain. Here's the loop of my next, my, well actually a stitch there. And you continue that way all the way up. So here's my next stitch and the next stitch here. And you make sure that everything is lining up nice and even. So you can see that. It just looks like that little line there. Here's my next stitch. My next stitch. Continue to the top. And I'm going to show you how this stitch makes it really flat on the other side. Of course you would be using matching yarn, okay? I'm using the yellow yarn just so you can see what that seam is looking like. So let me finish here following that same motion into one loop the one closest to you and then the next loop okay here I'm going to come to my last stitch because remember I started on the second 
chain here, the middle stitch. So here's the second chain, one. And here's the second one, there. And then if you have like more rows, more stitches, you will continue. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and take that off. Now you can see how it just looks kind of like it's woven. It's called, that's why it's called a weave seam. You're like weaving through that. Now when, the neat thing about this, when I turn it around, right here you're going to be able to see the, the stitch because it's got yellow, so I wanted you to be able to see it. If you pull this, you can make it tighter, but then it's going to lay super flat. You can see there and there. If this was a blue yarn, you wouldn't see it. It would just kind of disappear. And then if I squeeze them together, you're going to see that the top seam is really flat and it's a super nice really nice budded seam and it works great for um, blankets or granny squares things that you want to have it look really flat so here you'll be able to see the yellow seam the yellow yarn but when you're using your matching yarn you won't be able to see that so this is how this would look just like that okay so this is called a weave seam and it's really good for these kind of like motifs that you're stitching together um, squares, triangle, octagons, whatever you want, hexagons that I'm going to do for you. This is just a whip stitch seam. Um, one of the good things about the whip stitch seam, it's pretty fast, but it's actually stronger than this um, weaving seam. When you would use the whip stitch seam, would be things, um, if you're making a garment or places like, say, perhaps uh, on a shoulder uh, when there's going to be a lot of stress or on the underarm area, you may want to have this kind of uh, seam. So what you do for these, you're going to put the right sides together. You can see that this is the wrong side. So these are my right sides. I'm going to hold these, put them right sides together, the pretty sides together, and the wrong sides are on the outside. Now you can do the same like I did here. Find your center point or the first stitch in the end. So this would be the second stitch as well. So here's the second chain, one, two, that's my second chain. And here's one, two, the second chain, one, two. But what you're going to do in these is that instead of going just through one loop, you're going through the two loops of the stitch. So let me just start this off so I could get this going for you. And then I'll start showing you here. Let me just put this little, just to get that going. Make sure you align your stitches. So here, you could see the chain, it looks kind of like little V's going this direction, I guess. So here, in the other one, I just went through one stitch. Here, you're going to go through both. So here, if you see, let me twist this around a little bit. You can see that I'm going to go through the top two loops. So I could go that, you could see that. So here, you see one, two, and then the bottom little loop is there. On the other side, I'm going to do the same thing going to go one, two, so I'm going through both loops of every stitch. So here's actually one, two, three, four, four little loops on the hook, on the hook, not the hook, the needle, and then I'm going to go through all of those. Let me move this tail out of the way. And this is a real strong seam like for, like I said, pressure points. You're going to go to your next stitch, and you could see like the stitch here, you could see that that's the bottom portion. I'm going to go through both of these loops, go through the next one, go through both of those loops as well. And if I look here, that's the bottom one is free, so I'm going through there. So you look, you see both little V's on the needle there. And this is how you would continue all the way across. To, so you could see that this would be stronger because you're getting both loops through. Make sure you match up all your stitches. Um, I just split the yarn there. All the way across. The problem, the one of the things about this seam though is that it will be bulkier and it won't lay completely flat as, as flat as the weave seam. So that's why sometimes I said depending on what you're using it for you'll need to decide which of the uh, stitches you want to use instead. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off and then we'll come back and show you how it lays.
Okay, here I'm coming to the last chain, so I go through both of those loops, and then my next two loops. Okay, and then you can just make your knot if you if you need to there. I'm just gonna leave this open so I could show you here. So you could see that the difference between this seam, it looks the same here, like it looked here, right? But it's actually bulkier because it's going through both of these. So now this one, when I flip it over, my seam is going to be super flat. So it works perfect like for granny squares, little motifs, or like little purses or something, like granny squares you want to see. Now this, you could see how much bulkier it is. See, on this one, there is no bulk. It's laying flat. This one, you could see the bulk there. When I open it up, it's going to lay flat. You're going to see it there. But it's going to be, it, it is kind of a little bit of ridge on one side. Where this one, if I feel this, it's nice and flat. This one, there's a little ridge. But this one's a really strong seam for shoulders, areas, underarms, air, places. Like if you're doing a, a strap for a handbag, you want that to be reinforced. You're going to go through all those loops. So these are the two different two different ways to sew your pieces together. So I hope that this video helped you. Please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit that like button. And remember always that God loves you.